Well, I like to put a human face on both the beneficiaries and the practitioners of this technology because it's, it's been so demonized that the classic sort of Franken food image that people have in their heads of a uh, ear of corn with fangs or a tomato with a syringe going into it, all of these kinds of fanciful ideas. And actually, if you, if you meet farmers in developing countries whose crops are suffering at the moment from diseases, for example, uh, cassava brown street virus, which is seriously affecting the production of an important food security crop in East Africa. And you see that these people are going hungry, that their kids are looking thin and malnourished, and that cassava is really their last. I mean, these, are, these, are, these people are hungry because they're poor, but cassava is pretty much the only crop that they can grow on the small amounts of land that they have. Um, and then you know there's a biotech solution, you know there's a, there's a virus resistant, genetically modified version available, it's been developed by scientists, but they're never going to be able to access it in th th these farmers because, because of the prohibitions that governments have set up and because of the misinformation which is still promoted by NGOs. Really, it's really very tragic because it's holding back uh, a technology which has the potential to do a lot of good. They have to go out there and, and sell the technology. Um, I mean, for example, Rothamsted Research here in the UK, when they developed their aphid-resistant wheat, got that into field trials, there was a big campaign against it by a, an activist group. Um, and they made YouTube videos, they went on the media, they had to front it themselves. And, they had, and their you know, passionate faces as young researchers, for, um, with, with a strong belief in what they were doing, I think won the debate. As opposed to just seeing, you know, this, the, the conventional way this is constructed, where you've got a big bad corporation versus the, the plucky small um, civil society group or you know farmers group or something like that. Um, so we really, ha the challenge really is to reframe the debate in a more um, realistic way. I think pe people are suspicious of technology, um, that, that technology is somehow an inappropriate intervention, as opposed to land rights or something. Now, we're all in favour of land rights, we're all in favour of a more equitable gender approach and things like that, and they're essential. But that doesn't mean you can forget about technology. You know, all of our lives have been transformed by technology, communications technology, anything, you know, um, travel, anything, you name it. Uh, so technology is probably the biggest driver of change in the modern world, and why should it be any different in Africa? And when you want change, because people are uh, living in very poor subsistence situations, why should those be the ones who have the least access to technology?